and hello everyone welcome back to another NIM tutorial in this tutorial we'll be taking a look at parsing JSON in NIM now oftentimes you will find yourself needing to parse some sort of data and very often that sort of data would be in the form of JSON whether you're working from MongoDB or any sort of maybe pinging an API. So let's get to it. Let's import STD JSON. And let's also import options. Now the reason I'm importing it like this is so we don't have to split this into two lines. So we could do this. This is perfectly fine as well. But if we want them on the same line, we could do this. Or optionally, you can exclude that it comes from the STD library and import two modules like this. Anyhow, so let's create an age, make that equal to 19. Then let's create another variable called converted JSON. Now to form JSON inside of NIM, we need to use a special syntax. So it first starts with a percentage symbol, followed by an asterisk, and then our array with our JSON data. Now for those of you who don't know JSON, JSON data is simply like this, where we have, let's say a field and then a value, a field, then a value, field, then a value. This is JSON. So we're going to be replicating the same idea here. So here we can then do this. And let's say name. Steve. And here we can actually pass in an already defined variable into this. So you don't need to specify an existing or a new value every time you want to insert a value for a key. Now sometimes you end up in a scenario where you have a field but the value itself cannot exist. Usually in JSON we can use something such as null or undefined. Actually just null it seems. So where we can use null, which means there's nothing here. In NIM's case, we don't necessarily have null to use, but we can use nil for the same purpose because it is the same thing, it means nothing. And here we go. We have some basic JSON data. Now if you want to display this, you can just say echo converted JSON and here we go now it's not really formatted so it looks very difficult to read but it's the same thing name Steve age 19 and it goes on until it starts right here with this second part and then we have name Jack age 24 so as simple as that we have created some JSON you'll notice if you hover over this you also get a type of JSON node we can also go let string JSON and that can be a string version of this JSON because this dollar symbol like with most things in them converts something to a string in this case it converts this object into a string we can parse a string into JSON by going let's go let parsed and we can make that equal to parse JSON and we can say string JSON. And then we can echo out parse. And we'll get the same value. So this converted this string, which if you hover over this, you'll notice it's a string, back into JSON for us. Cool. Now I can also get the first object inside of this JSON by specifying the index you want. So if I do this, I'll get the first one and only the first one. It will no longer be in this array here. It will just be this first one here, the first object. Where name, Steve, age 19, hobbies, eating and coding. So to make it easier, we'll, we'll save this into OBJ. And then we can echo out OBJ 
And in here we can specify the field we want to get inside of this object. So name, age, hobbies, username, or type. So in this case, let's just say name. And here we have to say dot get string. This will get the string from this value here. So if we run this, we'll get Steve. So we said in this first one right here, because this here we select the first object by saying index zero, get this value from this name field, which is Steve, and get that as a string. Without that get string, it will give us this. And we would say let x is equal to obj. You'll notice this x here is of type JSON node and not of type string. That is why we say get string. And that's why when we print it out, we get quotes. We're here where we said get string, we did not receive quotes. So you'll just need to remember that when you try and get a value. Same with if you want to get a number value, you will have to say get int. And that will give you an integer. But if you don't specify this, it will return a JSON node type, not an integer. They may look the same when printed out, but they are not the same type. So they will work differently. You can't add something to a JSON node as simply as you would add something to an integer. Let's say we try and get the username dot get string. Now we'll know this username here is a null, meaning we don't have a value in here. So when we try and run this, we'll just get nothing. However, we can give it a default value. So if we have a null or a nil value in this case here, then we can just say, give it a default value of, let's say, Luke. Then when it gets it and it sees it is nil, it will give us this default value here. So if I were to put name there, we'll just get Steve. But if Steve was nil, we'll get Luke. So if I were to make this nil now, then we'll get Luke instead. Now if you want to access arrays, they're pretty simple. So in this case, let's say we want to access hobbies. Hobbies, so now we have the array. And now we specify the index, so let's say index one, meaning coding, because zero, one. And then get string. So there we go, we get coding from this hobbies array right here. Now note, this can all be added here like this, but I find this to look very complex and I didn't really like it when it's too complex. So I like to do this, just so you know. Now you can also add to this JSON here by saying obj dot add, and you can do this with any object or any node type, old, and then percentage, and then what you want to save there. The percentage is to convert that to a JSON value. So if we echo out OBJ, then here we get old false. And here we could say no in a string. And if we run that, we'll get no. So as simple as that to add to any JSON object. In this case, to keep it simple, I just selected this object here, which is also confer considered a JSON node. You can also check if one of these keys here exists inside of this object. So here we can say object.contains, and let's ask if it contains name. And we get true, because it does contain name. If I were to say name2, there is no name2 here in this object, we'll get false. So it checks for the keys, not the values, but the keys. Now you can also copy some JSON by going let A is equal to OBJ. However, take note that this is a shallow copy, meaning if we change something in this variable here, because it is a shallow copy, it will modify the original variable here. So if I go and say 
a.delete, which means delete a key and its value, and I say name, then echo out a, and just to separate them, and then echo out object, you will notice both a and the object have removed the name, key, and value from the object. If you want to do a deep copy, you should go dot copy. What this does is it creates a new variable. It does not reference the old variable, but it creates a new one and sets it in A. Meaning if we change something in A, object here will not be modified. So now if we were to run this, you'll notice only A lost the name, key and value pair. So always remember this when you want to copy in JSON object that you will need to use deep copy if you don't want to modify the original variable. Now you can also do a couple of other cool things such as escape JSON and let's just put a string object in there. Now if we were to run this, you'll notice that it escapes everything here. Meaning that if you were to pass this in somewhere, it will see this as a string and it won't try to break out of it at some point or whatnot. So this will make it string safe. If you don't want these quotes before and after, you can also do escape JSON unquoted. And this will do the same, but it will just remove the quotes before and after this string here. Perfect. Now let's say we want to specify the object type here. Because currently when we get this JSON, we don't actually know what's inside of it. We don't know what key and value pairs they have. It's not typed. So let's try and type it. So let's go type and let's make it a person, which is an object. The name is a string. The age is an int. Then we can also specify hobbies, which would be in sequence of string, username. And because username can either be a string or just nil, we can use the options module that we imported right here. We can use that to say option string, meaning it can either be a string or it's not a string. And in the type, which is a string. And we'll just add back text here because we already have type here. Because sometimes you will end up with an issue where sometimes people will put a API up and when you pull data from the API, some of the keys will be actual keys that your program uses. So you will need to use these back ticks to escape them and make sure that it doesn't conflict with the keys in your language. So let's say let Jack is equal to converted JSON at index one. So this right here, and if we say dot two and we specify the object it should be converted to. So now if we hover over this, we don't get a JSON node. We get a person object. So just like that, you basically typed your JSON object. So here we can then go echo Jack dot hobbies and Jack dot type. If we run this, if we run this, we get hunting lizard. So just like that, you can convert a JSON node into something you might feel easier understanding into a normal object in them. Finally, we can also parse a file that contains JSON. So let's say let f is equal to parse file and we just pass it and here I have a file called users.json which just has this users.json and we can specify dot slash to specify this 
folder, so in the same directory. We can echo out F just to see what we get. And here we go. So here we get the JSON object. If we hover over F, we say, see, it is a JSON node type. And then if you want to make sure that printing it out is easier to read, what you can also do is then go echo F dot pretty and then the indentation you want by default it would be two so it would look like this and we just stop that first echo so by default it would look like this but you could make the indentation a little bit more meaning these spaces here and we get this so instead of two spaces now it will be four spaces and this might make it easier to read when you try and display it in the terminal and that's the basics on reading and understanding how JSON works in NIM. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next NIM tutorial.